Hello, welcome to Luna Midnight Designs. This project was chosen by you. I first had to decide what I was gonna do, so I gathered a few ideas. So I made a poll with these options and let you guys pick which one I was gonna do. And Unique Basis won. After that, I gathered all my unique dolls and came up with themes or ideas for each of them. I again had a poll for all of you guys to pick. In the end, Butterfly Fairy won. I had already cut her hair and taken her eyes. I have a small design for her, just a few notes of how I want her to look. So let's get started. First, I got a cleaner face and removed the rest of her hair stubble. So I used acetone on her face, which was really, really hard. It took forever and a lot of pushing and scraping and it was very, very stubborn. Next, I boil her head to soften it and scrape out the glue in the remaining hair. And now she is ready. For her eyes, I made a mold of the original eyes and tried my hand at making them out of resin. I mixed the parts, added the white and the shimmer, and poured it into the mold and waited for it to cure. So far, so good. Well, it was getting them back in her head that was the problem, so that failed. I tried heating up her head and squishing them in there, but in the end, I gave up. Yay! Time to think of a different approach. I decided to fill her eye holes with epoxy clay, so I filled in the hole with layers of clay, and on the last layer, I smoothed it out as best I could, made it clean as possible, make it look like an actual eye, and it worked out! Yay! Her hair was the easiest part of this whole doll. I hate rerooting, so that says a lot. I am using these two colors from Shimmer Locks on Etsy. I rerooted her part and hairline fully, and then sparingly the rest of her head, just making sure I have enough hair, and then I fill as much as I can with the leftover hair. I also save a little bit for an idea later on. Once rerooted, glued, and straightened, I attach her head back to her body. Next, I give her big elf ears. I did this after so the clay wouldn't crack or break during the reroute, because I was worried that would happen. I stab wire into her ear holes and shape it to a point. I then add clay as a base layer, then once that's cured, I add more clay and shape it to look like elf ears. I then color match with her skin tone and paint the head and ears. Since she is all bundled up, I get to work on her face, which took four tries. <sighs> so I go through the steps, blushing the ears, the face, adding eyeshadow and her to her lips and eyes, and so far it's looking good. Next, I add color pencil to add more details and color. Again, so far so good. And then I paint on white details, like little fairy wings to her face to make her look more fairy-like, I guess. She has a big face surface area. I want it to look good and not so empty. Next, I give her eyes. Well, I hate it. To try and save this face up, I change her eyes to a different color, but gross. So I wipe it all away and try again. This time I started with the white wing design, then added the blushing, I then add more color, and well, I was so scared for the eyes I waited and waited and didn't record me doing them, but you'll see them soon. For her extra details and accessories, I got some water drop beads and some little flower beads and other colored shape beads and other beads. So much potential. So I start with styling her hair. Like I said earlier, I did save some extra hair for this idea I had. I want to make a butterfly hair shaped thing. So I take some wire, I wrap it with paper tape, and then I glue on the extra hair I saved to the paper tape. I then shape it to look like butterfly wings the best I could. I then braid and style her hair, adding the butterfly hair piece, and I curl her hair using the straw and hot water method. I also made her a wire crown with beads and raindrop beads. Oh, here you can see her eyes. I also gave her wire ear jewelry, and in the next shot, you will see I added white lashes to the corners of her eyes. Oh, right here. I also paint her nails and add wire to her feet, which I then remove later. Now, her wings were a pain. I start with paper cutout version, just to like get the feel and the sizing of them right. 
I then trace each wing to a big piece of paper so that I can bend the wire to the right shape. I do it for each wing. Six for one side and then six for the other side. So 12 in total. I end up only using eight in total. Four for both sides. My idea was to do something similar to my alien fairy wings with the resin, but adding wire to it to make them strong and less breakable. So I was going layer by layer, adding the resin, and it was going good, and then I added colored resin with shimmer, and then I didn't like them anymore. I had no idea what to do, so I made more wire wings to replace the ones I ruined. And then I gathered up my beads and got the brilliant, torturous idea to make the wings with beads. So I make each wing have a different color or gradient of beads. And I thought I was done. They looked nice, I was happy, but no, I have to torture myself even more and make the inside of the butterfly wings with more beads. <laughs> But I do the opposite of what the outside beads are. So the clear and white beads for the outside mean light and dark purple for the inside. And I have to do this seven more times. Why do I do this to myself? But the result in the end is worth it. They look amazing. Now to attach them to the doll. I use strong magnets, which in the end are not strong enough. And I use epoxy clay to attach the wings to the magnet and each other. Oh, we aren't done yet. <laughs> for her outfit, I make tiny wire wings and use resin for them. I then make bead wings and attach them all together with resin. I then add a big raindrop bead to the center with resin as well. And I add more beading details to her butterfly corset thing. Most of the extra bead details are to make sure the corset is wearable, removable, and stay on the doll. I then add silver butterflies as well. Her bottoms, again, was a struggle. It took at least three tries to get something decent, but in the end, it all worked out. I used this silk fabric to make a tube skirt. I then attached strings of beads in more details like the flowers and the raindrop beads until I was happy with how it looked. And finally, this headache of a doll is done. And here is the final doll, Raindrop the Butterfly Fairy. Drip, drip, drop, the rain falls. She loves to dance to the music of the rain. Drip, drop, drip. She sings a lullaby. La, 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 la. She sings and dances as the rain goes drip, drip, drop. She turned out beautifully. Through all the struggle and headache and screaming at her, she ended up perfect. The wings and the raindrop details are my favorite part. I don't know how I feel about her name, Raindrop. If you guys have a better one, leave a comment. You all are the best at naming my dolls, honestly. Anyway, thank you all for joining me today. And creating this doll was a really big challenge. Follow me on Instagram to see more and to be more a part of my process. And subscribe to catch future videos. Thank you all for the love and support. Have a creative day. See you soon. Bye. Drip.